Welcome. This concise gatha carries a powerful message that resonates with the essence of Zen philosophy. The main focus of this Buddhist wisdom is to encourage engaging with a different perspective. The shadow moves the other way. Instead of striving forwards, the shadow relaxes backwards. Instead of reaching the end, the shadow finds no beginning. To gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and the nature of reality, we must shed light on the hidden or unconscious aspects of our true nature, known as the shadow. Thus, the concept of the shadow represents the hidden or unconscious aspects of our true nature that, when illuminated, can provide us with a more comprehensive understanding of ourselves and the nature of reality. In this chapter, I will offer insights into the key concepts of Zen philosophy by elaborating on some crucial points in this poem. What is a gatha? So, a gatha is a short poem or verse that's used in Zen to help people remember important teachings. It's like a little song or poem that has a simple but powerful message. The Buddha himself used gathas to teach his followers about mindfulness and awareness. People use gathas in their daily activities like cooking or cleaning, to help them stay present and mindful. By repeating these little poems, they can remember to be grateful and aware of what they're doing in the moment. Overall, gathas are an important tool in Zen that help people remember the teachings and stay mindful in their daily lives. In my world of Zen, there is no strict definition of what makes a gatha. However, there are some common traits and guidelines that gathas tend to follow. One of the most important things about gathas is their conciseness. They are typically short and to the point, conveying a simple message in just a few lines or verses. In addition to being concise, gathas also need to be clear and easy to understand, even for those who are new to Zen practice. They often employ simple language and straightforward imagery to convey their message. Another key feature of gathas is their memorability. They are often used as a tool for memorization, so they need to be easy to remember and recite. While not necessary, many gathas also have a poetic quality to them, using language and imagery to convey their message in a powerful and memorable way. Overall, the most important criteria for a gatha are simplicity, clarity, and relevance to the practice of Zen. They are a powerful tool for helping practitioners stay mindful and present in their daily lives. A Bodhisattva In Mahayana Buddhism, a Bodhisattva is someone who vows to become enlightened for the benefit of all beings. Their path is characterized by the cultivation of virtues such as compassion, wisdom, and skillful means to help others overcome suffering and attain liberation. The path of a bodhisattva is beginningless because it's not something that starts when someone takes the vow to become a bodhisattva. Instead, it's a journey that has been happening over many lifetimes as the bodhisattva develops the qualities and skills necessary to become enlightened. The path of a bodhisattva is characterized by a deep commitment to practice, a willingness to face challenges and setbacks, and a profound sense of dedication to the well-being of all beings. The cultivation of virtues such as patience, generosity, loving-kindness, and wisdom are essential to this path. These virtues are not just cultivated in one lifetime, but over many lifetimes, as the bodhisattva gradually develops the skills and qualities necessary to become enlightened. The idea of the beginningless path is significant because it reminds us that becoming a bodhisattva and achieving enlightenment is not something that can be done quickly or easily. It requires a deep commitment to practice and a willingness to face challenges and setbacks. Moreover, the journey is ongoing and has no clear beginning or end point. This means that the journey of a bodhisattva is a lifelong process of growth and transformation that requires a profound sense of dedication to the well-being of all beings. Not striving forward. There are two important principles that relate to finding inner peace and enlightenment. The first principle is the idea that we do not need to attain or achieve anything outside of ourselves in order to find true happiness and peace. This principle encourages us to turn our attention inward and recognize that the true nature of reality is already present within us. 
it is about letting go of our preconceived notions of what we think we need in order to be happy or successful and recognizing that true happiness comes from within. Not reaching the end. The second principle is related to the practice of letting go of our attachments and aversions. It involves cultivating a sense of detachment and equanimity towards the things we encounter in our lives, allowing us to experience them fully without being attached to them. This practice can be challenging, as we are often conditioned to attach ourselves to the things we desire and avoid the things we dislike. However, by cultivating a sense of detachment and equanimity, we can free ourselves from the cycle of suffering and find inner peace. Together, these two principles encourage us to let go of our preconceived ideas of what we need in order to be happy and find peace within ourselves. By turning our attention inward and cultivating a sense of detachment and equanimity towards the world around us, we can free ourselves from suffering and find lasting happiness and peace. Before we conclude, I would like to introduce myself to you. Hey. My name is Daniel, I am from Germany, thanks for listening to this lecture. Since the content of this video can be difficult to grasp at times, I've taken an unconventional approach. I've designed the video so that it can also be used as a printable document. This means that you can access and use it offline, or even print out selected pages. With this option, you can use your favorite pen to highlight, add to, or modify the text as you see fit. Now that I've shared my insights about how to approach Zen, I'm curious about your thoughts on it. How do you approach Zen? Do you have a specific practice or do you allow life to unfold on its own until you become more gentle with age? Please share with us your own experiences and insights. I am not sure when my next Zen art piece will arrive, but I know it will come eventually. It may not interest many people, but I will create it regardless. Obtaining the right paper for my Zen art required a lot of effort, including working with mushrooms. However, the time I spend with mushrooms is minimal compared to the time I devote to Zen. Before we end, I would like to offer my empty bowl to you. I did put a lot of work into this lecture series. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe you want to consider to buy me a coffee? I do mention this unintentionally. There is a serious reason behind it. That is why I ask. Balance is present in all aspects of life, such as summer and winter, day and night, hot and cold, and more. Taking and giving is also a polarity that requires balance. Only when there is balance can we achieve true happiness and harmony. Therefore, if you take something, such as information from the internet, it is important to give something back. Take a moment to assess if your life is in balance. If you feel inclined, you can show your support by making a donation, and I would be grateful for it. However, there are many other worthwhile projects that you can support, such as Wikipedia. Support doesn't have to be monetary either, it can be as simple as sharing a smile or leaving a kind comment. Let's spread joy and love wherever we go. Thank you, for spending your time with me. Auf Wiedersehen.